Hey team, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we are going to review the F194 drone, which I got from AliExpress. It's an 80 pound drone, and we are gonna put it through its paces. We're gonna take a look at what's inside the box. Then we're gonna test fly outdoors, test fly indoors, and have a look to see what this thing can do. And if I think it's worth it, I'm gonna sell this drone to whoever wants it. There'll be a link in the description below. So let's have a look at actually what's inside the box. So first of all, I was actually quite surprised that it came in this nice, tidy box. Sometimes you just get the cases. So yeah, very impressed with the box that it came in. So let's have a little look inside. We've also got a carry case now. As nice as this looks, it's not actually gonna protect an awful lot, but it might prevent any scrapes and scuffs on the actual drone itself. So we'll unzip it and let's have a look at what we get. We get the instructions and I will be coming back to these because these are actually needed. So we've got the instructions. In here we have some spare propellers, the charging cable, the USB charging cable, and a little screwdriver. Then we have the controller itself. So yeah, not a, not, not a bad controller, you know, plastic in the making, but not, not, not a terrible controller. Obviously flips up there, your phone goes in here. You've got the key features on the buttons. I'm not gonna bore you with what's on there, but yeah, you've got everything you need. And to be fair, it's not a bad controller. Then we have the battery. So the battery was actually found inside the drone. I just wanted to take it out to show you that the case actually does have a place for a battery. And lastly, here is the drone itself. It's quite a tidy drone, obviously four propellers, and it opens up like every single, pretty much every single drone does. So the four legs, out they come, and it gives you your drone. And then the battery just pops in the back like so, clips in, and there we have the drone and what's in the box. Now, I said I was gonna come back to the instructions. These are, I think, crucial for setting up and getting the drone airborne. You'll see shortly that we had a few issues actually getting the drone actually airborne, but there's a, a code which takes you to a video which is okay if you combine the video with what's written in these instructions you'll you'll get the drone airborne um, faster probably than we did some of the features then of this drone is obviously you've seen the brushless motors but it has optical flow so hovering it should be able to hold itself nice and still we shall test that long battery what i couldn't find out is actually how long the battery lasts i did look and search but i I don't know, so I'm gonna go based on what it says about 10 minutes. Lastly, the drone has this camera. Now, it's gonna give you the 4K, it has a 4K camera. We are gonna test that. I can't believe it's gonna be 4K, but we are gonna test it. What I do like about this drone is, on the actual controller itself, you can control the angle of the camera while it's airborne. So it's not a manual positioning, you can control it from the drone. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. And obviously I'm looking forward to trying the camera out and seeing what we get. Now, just before we get airborne, hopefully get airborne, you're gonna to need to download the app. So I'll be putting up a video now of us doing that. Um, there's a code that you'll get in the instruction manual that will help you and guide you to the correct app. Get familiar with that app. It does help you in the setup and the takeoff of the drone. So like I say, that is the drone so far for 80 quid. I'm, I'm happy, but now we're actually going to test to see if it flies outside, if it flies indoors. We're going to test the return to home. One thing I will mention is it has no obstacle avoidance. So a question that we get asked is, is this drone good for beginners? At the moment, on what I've seen, I'm basing the fact that people think it's for beginners because of the price. But a beginner drone, I believe, probably should have obstacle avoidance. So let's now go test fly it and I will be very honest with how it goes and you're gonna see how it goes. And I'll be very honest with my review at the end. So that's me done talking. Let's get the drone outside and up in the air where it belongs. Okay, so this is the area that we're gonna take off from and hopefully land. So preparing the drone, just extending all four legs to come out easy, locking the position well, then inserting the battery. Beware, this takes up to five hours to charge. So turning the drone on to calibrate and geo-reference it, you have to horizontally rotate it and vertically rotate it, which is what the instructions and the video will show you. Okay, so as we place the drone down, it's now time to dive into the app. So a little walkthrough, you have your map at the bottom right, and you have loads of different features, which is what I really liked about this app. You can obviously take photos, you can record, and everything then gets saved straight to your phone. And I've actually done this, and it does work really well. Okay, so the moment of truth, time to get airborne. 
So the drone took off like a dream and actually hovered brilliantly up until we took it a little bit higher and then I believe wind came into play and suddenly flying this drone became a battle. So as we go a little bit higher, you'll now start to see me almost lose control and stack it straight into the tree. So this isn't my bad fly, and I promise this is me absolutely fighting with it to keep control. Here is what you'll see from the camera. So the actual image itself isn't too bad, but you can see how unstable it is as I'm battling with the drone to try and keep it, well, keep it in the sky, to be honest, but keep it still and able to record. So yeah, you can see that I'm having a real battle with the drone, but we do actually steady it up and you can see the quality of the camera now, which isn't too bad. So now in this next clip, you'll see me control the camera and point it down with the remote control. It is quite jerky, as you can tell. It doesn't help that the drone isn't flying smoothly. Again, almost stacked into a tree, but again, you can see the quality of the camera and again, not too bad. But now I start to actually win the battle. And it's not really the drone, it's the wind that was causing the problems, but the wind wasn't that strong. Almost stacked into the camera woman there as well. But I'll tell you what, I'm actually really starting to have fun with this drone. It is great to fly, bit of a battle, but it is really good fun to fly. It's just, it is very susceptible to wind. It's not very powerful, so a little bit of wind and it is a battle but like I say it is actually great fun and I'm really really enjoying it so sort of bring it in a little bit closer now so you can see I'm actually trying to hover it but um, it's it's not great at hovering a little bit lower where we are now not too bad any higher absolute nightmare you need to be in control of it so just another couple of clips of me nearly stacking it one more time into the tree but somehow managing to save it so we went a little bit higher thought we'd play with the altitude but as we did that, as you can imagine, wind came into play and the drone became even harder to control. And I thought, look, rather than lose this drone, let's bring it back down. But you can get very, very good altitude on it. So here it is, as I said, a little lower in the hover. And yeah, I'm having to control it with the remote control a little bit, but not too bad. Now, here comes the fun part. I hit the return to home button. Let's see exactly what happens. Now warning signs were already alarming because the drone should be landing to the right and yeah, no obstacle avoidance so we hit the slide and then eventually just dunked it down. Another clip of it, yeah, and then ended up just dunking it down in case we hit the slide again. So after an interesting outdoor test, let's try it indoors. So there's still a little bit of setup but nowhere near as much as the outdoor work so you still need to calibrate it and that does require the rotation horizontal and vertical and once that is done and you've got the remote control connected you can then fly indoors so we took off and to me this is where the fun really started flying the drone indoors was an absolute dream obviously we're not affected by the wind so it sits in that hover really really well the quality of the camera again is it's not too bad at all not the 4k but not too bad certainly usable and some certainly something you can practice with but yeah lots and lots of fun with this indoors i probably could have flown it for the rest of the afternoon so it, the problem is the no obstacle avoidance so i got a little close to the ceiling obviously the floor is the floor uh, you just got to be wary of where you're flying it and just make sure you've got control of it but it's a lot easier to fly indoors and so much fun So just a quick look at the camera then controlling it from remote control pointing it down you can see it is jerky but it works well and it's good enough for the money that you're paying and then a nice comfortable landing after and here we are just looking through the app so this is what you'll see from your mobile phone when you're flying again nice clear image and loads of different features that you can really play with okay team there we are, we are done. So you can see how difficult I found it outside, even with just a tiny amount of wind, the drone was being taken by it. It was a lot harder to control. Indoors, however, this was a lot of fun. It obviously wasn't affected by the wind and it was just a good drone to fly with. The camera, do you know what? Obviously it's not 4K, but it wasn't terrible. If you're just starting out in terms of wondering whether you know you're going to use a camera in a drone then this gives you great experience in flying a drone and trying to manage the camera 
I would highly suggest starting indoors, becoming very familiar and comfortable with flying this indoors. And once you're happy, then take it outdoors. Overall, this drone for £80 isn't bad. It's actually qu quite a steal, I think. It'll do everything you want it to do. It's got an okay camera. It handles well. I was quite impressed. To be honest, I enjoyed flying it as challenging as it was at times. So would I recommend buying this drone? Do you know what? Yeah, I would. Is it a beginner drone? Great question. Indoors, 100% this is a beginner drone. Brilliant to start with. Gives you that chance to play with a camera as well. So yeah, do you know what? This is a beginner drone in price and a beginner drone indoors. Once you've got this, sort it indoors, then take it outdoors and have a play. It does become a lot harder outdoors though. So if you want this drone, not obviously this one because we stacked it into a slide, but if you want a drone like this, hit the link in the description. We'll be selling it to whoever wants it for that £80 plus postage and packaging. If a few of you want this drone, please tell me and I'll order a few more in and I'll ship them out. Overall, I was quite happy with this. So there you go. There's the drone. There's the first review. I would love to hear your comments. How did you find my review? Hopefully it was open and honest. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I say, please let me know if you enjoyed this video. Please comment and I'd love you to subscribe as well. Thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video.